Welcome back. In case you just join us, this is Plots Politics, and we are moving to the next issue. Many governors in the country did not win elections, but were declared winners by the judiciary. This was said by the prelate or the prelate of the Methodist Church of Nigeria, Samuel Uche. It said that electoral triumphs are given to some undeserving candidates through the court of law. He further stated that many governors are Supreme Court governors. That's a very strong one. Could this be true? Do Nigerians line up on election day to vote their preferred candidates just for the judiciary to install their own choice? Joining us to discuss this is Kolade Olutekubi, who is a legal practitioner. Uh, good evening, Mr. Kolade. Yeah, good evening, Kayode. Thank you for having me. And still joining or still staying with us is uh, Mr. Dele Farutimi. Uh, once again, uh, thank you for staying by. Thank you for having me. Let me start Good with evening, you, Mr. Mr. Farutimi. Um, I don't know uh, what comes to your mind when you listen to that statement from the clergyman. What do you think? Well, um, I don't know the basis of the prelate's conclusion, maybe somebody whispered something in his ears that only he is privy to. Maybe somebody went to the confessional to tell him what track. Okay, uh, we have a bit of network problem. Uh, let me throw that same question to you, Mr. Kolade Lutekumbi. How do you react to that statement? Uh, well, um, we've had it. Uh, we, are, we are all uh, participants in the politics of Nigeria. Some of us are becoming very wary about the way things are unfolding. But, uh, if you go through our constitution, there are provisions that are embedded in the constitution as to the qualification of who a governor will be. If you look at section 177 of our constitution, it gives you the qualification of a governor that firstly, he must be a citizen of Nigeria by birth. He must attain the age of 35 years. He's a member of a political party and is sponsored by a political party. I has been educated up to at least schools, school certificate level or equivalent. That is the provision in our constitution. But in the process of electing these uh, individuals as governor, a lot of things uh, take place. Some of them falsify their certificates. Some of them uh, have run foul of the law one way or the other. So the, the primate to have, mentioned, to have made mention of what he said is, is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is a bad taste in the mouth. Uh, and it's uh, it, 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 not far from the truth, and it's not far from the facts. Hmm. Because uh, what, what you see these days is so alarming that uh, the, the power to elect who becomes a governor is given to the electorates who are the ones that are to elect the leaders or, upon a, an election that are to be held. But what you discover is that after the election, in most cases, you do not get the candidate that has the majority to, to, to become the governor of the states. Now, if you look at the incidents, uh, the incidents that has happened in Nigeria, take, for example, the Bayelsa state election, take, for example, the Imo state election, take, for example, the Safara incident, and even the Kogi state inconclusive every uh, election that brought in Yaya Bello. When you go through all this, you are tempted to say that it appears as if the the electoral uh, the politicians are now they, they, they are now taking their victory through the courts. They are no longer confident in the electorate. They believe that even if they lose an election, there's a possibility that they could still become a governor. By, by approaching the courts. Okay. So, 
Mr. Lutakubi, let me, let, me, let me stay with you uh, while we're waiting for Mr. Farotimi to get reconnected. Uh, let me put it within context. As much as uh, the prelate did not mention a particular party, but it was very specific to say there is a party in Nigeria which get victory through the court. And he used the word, they are Supreme Court governors. Now, I, I, my confusion in that statement, I wish I were there to take him up on uh, being specific, is that from the history, as I'm talking about the contemporary history, We've had cases of ACM benefiting from the judiciary. We've had cases of PDP benefiting from the judiciary. And even the ones you've highlighted, it cut across different parties. So could it be that the judiciary is just doing its job and not necessarily taking side with any particular party? Um, uh, no, I, I, I wouldn't want to follow the primate uh, strictly say so. My, my attitude towards this is that Yes, the Supreme Court is the apex court where all uh, contending issues are brought and they, they, whatever value they give is in the finality. I would not want to, I would not want to uh, uh, um, give credence to the fact that a, a particular political party is that of the Supreme Court. Uh, yes, sometimes, you know, affinity <laughs> seems to suggest, you know, that uh, sometimes when these judges do have gone out of their context and they begin to affiliate with these politicians, the tendency is there for people to read many truth. But I still believe our Supreme Court, as we have it today, they are men of integrity and uh, they are men that, uh, you know, are proving their work. And I do, do not want to believe that any political party, for whatever, for whatever okay. it is called, is, is an extension of our Supreme Court. Thank you so much. I, I think we have uh, Mr. Farotimi back. Do we? Yes, you do. Okay, good. Can we get your, thank God, you and a retired lawyer. So to a large extent, I'm not saying you're going to take side, but let's look at your judiciary taking this kind of stone. Do you stand by what the prelates say? Or let me allow you to finish your thoughts. You were about making your opening statement. No, in actual fact, I think it's only fair to, let me just leave it where I'm taking it, but I'll try and tidy it out. What I was trying to get across is this. The Nigerian judiciary is not different from the Nigerian police. Hmm. To expect that the Nigerian judiciary is different from the Nigerian custom, <laughs> or the Nigerian press for that matter, would be to be exceedingly hypocritical. The Nigerian judiciary is peopled by Nigerians. They are not more Christian or more Muslim than any one of the other citizens of Nigeria. We are our own enemies. Now, having said that, let us be clear that we can trust our judiciary just as much as we can trust our police. We can trust our judiciary just as much as we can trust our doctors, our politicians. Our politicians appoint our judges. The last set of federal judicial appointments, about 30 something, I think, of those newly appointed judges are children of judges serving or retired. Is the judicial, is the bench now an hereditary position? And what we fail to advert our minds to when we ask some of these questions is that we tend to focus on parts. When you can smell that a fish is rotten, and then you're checking if the tail is still edible. How much justice really exists within our judicial system? How do you expect to find justice in a society that is unruled by law? There is so much hypocrisy, the lies we tell ourselves. The prelate might come out and speak as it relates to the judiciary. Should we talk about the clergy? <laughs> Should we speak of the clergy? 
we just have this occasional brain facts where we are talking about let's look at the totality of our society and just tell ourselves the truth for once instead of this hypocritical posturing that has the doctors looking at the lawyers as though the lawyers are the crooks and the doc lawyers are busy looking at the judges. We are all almost irredeemably corrupt and it's because our systems are okay. failed. So be uh, clear about this. Okay, M Mr. Farrell is the I mean, same I'm, as everything else. I'm just a bit I'm just a bit alarmed because we're talking about you people be. staying you under the sun people going to cast their vote, and at the end of the day, some, some, some people somewhere will obtain it by way of, in the name of corruption. And we believe no. No. that you are the last hope of the masses. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. That is you passing the buck right there. No, it's a question. How many votes, how many votes really count in Nigeria. The problem didn't start with the courts. That's what I'm telling you. And I can tell you for free. Now I'm retired and all that. But it still doesn't change the fact that we would be lying to ourselves if we nailed it down as though the problem be just the judiciary. Yes, there is problem in the judiciary. And yes, the prelate is almost completely correct in calling them out as he has done. But the point I am making is that as long as we are looking at a part of the problem without looking at the whole problem, okay. if we were a society ruled by law, not every electoral matter will be ending up in the courts. Thank you. How many votes really counted? Look at what happened in Oshun. It was that the courts that caused that. An election was practically concluded, and all of a sudden, phone calls here and there, abracadabra, and all of a sudden, we're having reruns. And as a condition for reruns, some people are disappearing from the race, and EFCC is throwing away files. Okay. Look at what happened in Ekiti. Look at what happened in Kogi. Well, so this matter, when we, we can pretend that the problem is the judiciary and is the okay. everybody else are saying... Mr. Farrow, to me, so it's not I, I, I think I got I you there. The I got you there. I got you there. I'm coming back to you to help us clean it up because definitely you definitely have a solution. But let me get Mr. Uh, Kubi, mm. please, if you can do this in the next one minute. How, where do we go from here? Uh, I think let us uh, contextualize this matter and situate the issue. You know, you have the electorate. You have the politicians, you have the electoral law, and you have the courts. Hmm. All the departments I've uh, just mentioned must play their roles in accordance with the rules. The electorate must play their own, possible, their own parts to ensure that they cast their votes. The, the, the politician must play by the rules. And they should stop causing confusion in this country. The problem that we are having is that of the politician, more of the politician than the courts. Because without the politician approaching the courts, where we, there's no way the court has so much to begin to decide electoral matter. And most of these electoral cases that have been brought to court, they are cases that are flagrant, you know, uh, disobedience of the electoral acts. For instance, you have a candidate presenting forged certificates. Most of them, they go to school abroad. You don't really know which certificate they are holding. And what the law says, clearly in section 177, we say they must have a school cert. But some of them want to upgrade their certificates. And so they run into trouble. And then where do you want the court to put its eyes? Look at the one that happened in Bayesa. It is the deputy governor that had a problem. The governor actually was elected. But because of the both of them have a joint ticket. So it is the we, we, be, we must begin to look at our electoral act okay. and see how we can put a proper amendment into okay. our electoral act and possibly give a life ban, ban this politician for life. Some of them that have run foul of the electoral act, you know, take them to court and get them convicted and ban them from participating in politics. Good. Thank you. That sounds very strong, and uh, it's something that we will continue to regurgitate from time to time. 
Mr. Farrow to me, please help me do justice to that. I know why you've done the x-ray, the diagnosis. There is a cure. What is the cure, sir? So I will not use the word. And that word is revolution. I will not use it. I'll keep it to one side. We can always come back and redefine it. But here is the thing. What it would take to deal with the Nigerian Malays would require a turnaround. We need to fundamentally restructure our electoral laws and our governance systems. In this age and time, there is no reason under the sun why we cannot have all of our elections in a single day and why we cannot do so digitally. Hmm. Um, or shall I say electronically? It doesn't necessarily... There are so many variables to how these elections can be held now. But because it has furthered certain persons or people's interest to avoid restructuring Nigeria or even our electoral okay. system, we've been logged into a system that everybody with half a brain should be aware is completely unsustainable. We have 774 local governments. We have 36 states. The cost of our governance is unsustainable and is not even delivering any value to the citizens. So it's a situation where you, we can treat all sorts of superficial issues. We can decide to go on a ring one curing exercise and ignore the leprosy. But the truth of the matter is that on the such a time as when we fundamentally restructure our country and our electoral laws, we are not going to be able to Thank move so forward much. as a people. Thank wow. you so much. I quite appreciate and we will continue to play this from time to time. While this will be uploaded on our YouTube channel, this is our statement from both of you that will continue to regurgitate and who knows when our redemption will come. Thank you once again, Mr. Dele Faro to me. Uh, thank I'm you just for having to know that you're a retired lawyer, but it's okay to still call you a lawyer. And thank you, Mr. Kolade Olutekumbi, for your insight on this issue. We quite thank appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yes, and to our viewers, we'll take a short break, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take on this particular issue. Please don't go anywhere. Here is my take. One thing that is not debatable is that electoral reform is an urgent need. Why this is true? Will our political class not still circumvent the system? Should we leave our destinies in the hands of violent and desperate political actors? If it is true that without conceding that some of the Supreme Court justices are influenced by deep-pocketed politicians, then electoral law needs to be rejigged, a document that punishes election riggers, a document that sends chivers down the spine of corrupt politicians, a document that protects the votes of the people that losers will consider election litigation as waste of time and resources. Do I see you express some kind of pessimism over this call? Let's keep hope alive. Let's not give up on the Project Nigeria. Thank you for watching this program as always. Until I see you again on the program, be reminded to please play your role as a responsible Nigerian in these trying times. Bye for now. I am Coyote Ladeide. <laughs>